Hi everybody, thanks for joining me today. I am Krista Rubin from the AIM at Skin Cancer Foundation. I am your Ask a Skin Cancer Nurse. In today's skin cancer snippet will be a brief uh, video talking specifically about squamous cell carcinoma. I thought it might be helpful to just um, review a few details, treatments, diagnosis, uh, for squamous cell because it is um, a common skin cancer and certainly something that we get lots of questions on at our um, AIM at Skin Cancer Foundation. So I thought it would be helpful to review this information today. So let's start with what it is. So squamous cell carcinoma or squamous cell skin cancer, abbreviated SCC, written out squamous cell carcinoma. And so that is a skin cancer that originates from the squamous cells, which are cells also known as keratinocytes that are found in the epidermis or top layer of skin. If they become malignant or if they become cancerous, they are then termed squamous cell carcinomas. That is different from other skin cancers like basal cell or melanoma, which originates from melanocytes. Basal cell skin cancer originates from basal cells, which are also found in the epidermal layer of skin. Squamous cell carcinoma is the second most common skin cancer, second to basal cell. The main cause of squamous cell carcinoma is ultraviolet exposure. So essentially the sun, other ways to be exposed to, um, to ultraviolet include things like tanning beds, in some cases, jobs. Certain occupations may have regular exposure to um, ultraviolet. There are also some other causes. Arsenic is something that over time can lead chronic exposure to arsenic, often in an occupation or job site, can uh, eventually lead to possibly um, squamous cell carcinoma. So occupational risks are also something that um, can lead to squamous cell carcinoma. Head and neck location. So squamous cell, as with many skin cancers, um, are found generally in sun exposed areas. So head and neck is a very common location, back of the hands or hands themselves. For men that may not have a lot of hair or who are bald or have thinning um, areas on the scalp, that is another common place to see squamous cells develop. Precursor lesions, so pre-skin cancers, uh, for squamous cell, it's known as an actinic keratosis, and those can often feel like rough, gritty, almost like sandpaper. Sometimes they can be felt and not seen. So if you have something that's on your, um, on your scalp or on the back of your hands that feels rough, but you can't really see something, that possibly could be an actinic keratosis, which is a pre-skin cancer. About 50% of those can, can convert into squamous cell carcinoma or squamous cell cancer over time. And the other 50% will go away on their own. Um, so, so we consider actinic keratosis to be a precursor to squamous cell carcinoma. Now, moving over to the other side here, um, treatments. There are many treatments, as you can see, for squamous cell carcinomas. I've listed a few of them here. Some of these are also treatment for actinic keratosis, which is the precursor lesion. Cryotherapy is a common uh, way that actinic keratoses or squamous cells are treated. And this involves uh, generally liquid nitrogen used to freeze one of the rough areas. So if you go into your dermatologist's office and they come out with that uh, little gun where they freeze spots, that's known as cryotherapy or freezing. Topical therapies are also very commonly used for squamous cells or actinics. Generally, these are topical chemotherapies or a topical immune modulator, which is something that is going to call attention to the immune system to attack the, to attack the skin cancer. So these are generally put on for a certain period of time. Sometimes um, it could be something like two to three times a week for six weeks. It really depends on where the skin cancer is located and what type it is felt to be and whether or not there are other risk factors. 
which your dermatologist or dermatology provider should review with you. But it's, it's very common for these treatments to be used. A prescription is generally sent to your pharmacy. You would pick it up at the pharmacy and then apply it as directed. E, D, and C is another uh, very common, very common treatment. It is known as electro desiccation and cautery. Essentially what happens is they will scrape the area and then either freeze it or burn it with a cautery to, and they'll do that sometimes for a few cycles. So it may be a scraping, then a burning, then a scraping, then a burning, scraping and burning. And then it will kind of leave like a little pothole that will heal generally within a few weeks and new healthy skill, skin will, um, will form at the site where the prior pre or skin cancer was. Photodynamic therapy. That is something that uses light therapy combined with a medication that activates the light therapy. It is something that's often used perhaps on the entire scalp or areas of the face or back of the hands. It uses a blue light therapy and a medication together um, to, to treat what we call a field area or an area that there is thought to be multiple pre-skin cancers like the actinics or known skin cancers based on biopsy, sometimes a combination. So PDT is the other name for it or photodynamic therapy is used. Excision is another one, uh, also a common, a common treatment. So this means removing, surgically removing, that's done either in the dermatology office or in the surgeon's office. And they will remove a predetermined amount of skin based on the features of an individual's um, uh, cancer as seen under the microscope or just based on the clinical presentation. Mohs surgery, another very common type of treatment for squamous cell carcinoma. And this is a very specialized treatment done, uh, performed by specially trained dermatologists known as Mohs surgeons. And essentially what happens is layer by layer skin is removed until normal skin only is seen. So in other words, they may remove a layer of a known squamous cell carcinoma. Then that physician looks at it under the microscope, determines whether or not they see active squamous cell or cancer cells. If they do, go back in, and this is all done in the office at the same time, remove another layer, look at it under the microscope. If they see uh, cells, abnormal cells, they'll go back in and continue to remove layer by layer. This is what's considered to be a skin sparing surgery. And the reason for that is because we only want to remove what's necessary to remove and not remove excessive amounts of skin if it's not needed. This is important, particularly in areas like on the face or in areas where there may not be a lot of skin to be able to pull together and suture. So Mohs surgery is a specialized surgery that's very commonly used for the treatment of squamous cell carcinomas something that often is used on the front part of the lower leg or in different parts of the body where healing may be an issue. Radiation therapy is also another treatment that can be used for squamous cell, and that involves a consultation with a radiation oncologist who is a cancer doctor who specializes in delivering radiation therapy. And in some instances, a squamous cell tumor may be too large or may be in a in a place where they cannot remove the whole the whole thing or they just feel like they the the edges need to be cleaned up in other words there may be some slightly abnormal cells along the edge of where a squamous cell was removed and radiation therapy may be recommended to um, kill any abnormal cells that may be residual Immunotherapy is kind of one of the newest treatments, and this is generally reserved for advanced squamous cell carcinomas in an area that surgery may not be possible, or if a squamous cell has come back in an area that was previously treated with surgery and or radiation, or um, a newer approach is something called a neoadjuvant approach. And what that means is that uh, immunotherapy may be used to shrink a tumor before it is removed. 
And generally these are reserved for larger tumors or tumors that are in an area where the surgeon is unclear if he or she would be able to remove it in its entirety. So it's often used as a method to shrink or reduce the the um, extent of surgery. So in other words, if there's going to need to be a very large area of removal, often uh, for advanced squamous cells, immunotherapy may be recommended before this, before the planned surgery. Generally, immunotherapies are given by the medical oncology team, and these are intravenous agents that are used, again, for specific situations in which the squamous cell is considered to be advanced. Chemotherapy is another modality used. It's being used less and less, and this would be the intravenous or oral form of chemotherapy, and that's typically reserved for squamous cells, cancer that has spread beyond the local area, perhaps to an organ, um, or it is something that is used when other treatments have been used and just not worked. So the chemotherapy here is different than the chemotherapy that's topically applied, as I mentioned earlier. Um, and so this is kind of a general overview of treatments for squamous cell carcinoma. Um, many of these therapies are evolving and every individual should have a plan for how it's going to be managed. And if you have questions about your particular treatment recommendations, doesn't make sense, you're not sure why one treatment was recommended over another, I highly recommend that you write down your questions and ask your treating team. If there are, if there are um, questions that you have, not sure you understand your treatment, et cetera, et cetera. It's always important to partner with your medical team and make sure that you understand the treatment recommendations that have been provided. So I hope today's skin cancer snippet has been helpful. Again, we talked today about squamous cell carcinoma, which is abbreviated SCC, and hope you found it helpful. Thanks so much for joining me today.